Hello, it's Allison, and today on Thinking Outside the Box, I'm going to show you how I created these trinket dishes. This is the trinket dish from the very first Dragonfly Glaze video, and I had many people ask to show how I created it. So, I decided that I would make a few more trinket dishes with polymer clay and the dragonfly glaze and just to have some other examples. And what I did here was I used texture on these three. And I'll show you exactly what texture I used to create that. This is just one color on here and when you turn it to the side, it goes from blue to violet. This one, I used one color for the base and the little dots, I dotted on a different color of the dragonfly glaze. So for this one, I used more the teal that goes to a violet and then I dotted on the blue over that. And you get kind of a neat effect. And this one here, I used the red to gold shift. So when you turn it to the side, you really see that pink, I wanna say, they say it's red, but to me it's more of a pink, that going to gold. And this is the blue going to violet. And that was, these two also were from texture. And I'll show you what I used for that. And this one, what I did was I painted, after I put my texture on, created my dish um, and baked it, I then painted um, the red to gold in here and then on top there the I want to say that's the blue the blue to violet and I just put that on with my finger and this is about three coats on each of these this one has three coats and then I took the blue with the end of a paintbrush and did all the dots that were in that design with just a dab of the blue. And this original one is actually, the base of it is two colors, which is the um, blue to violet and the green to violet. And then for the line in here, I used the red to gold. So when you turn it to the side at a different angle, you see the gold. So today I'm going to show you how I created this. And I'm going to go ahead and get my supplies together to show you the, what you'll need to create this project. And I will be right back. Okay, we are going to actually do this design here. But I am going to do that on the scalloped trinket dish. So I wanted to go through um, very quickly the um, texture that I used for the other dishes. And this one, the texture is actually from Macon's and it is a texture sheet. It's plastic. It can go through your pasta machine and it's a wave design. And I think it came in the C pack. There's a wave design and then other related things like that, but I could be wrong. Um, but I will make sure that I link everything in the description. So make sure you check that below this video. But that is what I used for the texture in this trinket dish. Now for the texture in this one, I used 
a, you can get these at Michael's. These are Kraft Smart Texture Plates and they are rubbery and they are two-sided. This one is just like dots or something. And then there's this one and that's how I got this design. And last but not least for this trinket dish, I used this design here and this is from, I will also link this in the description below. This is a penny black uh, texture stamp. And I'm not sure of the name of it. So I will um, go ahead and make sure that I put a link in the description. So those are the textures that I used for those trinket dishes. And um, to get their shapes, I used these uh, coaster cutters from RJ Crafts. And there's the scalloped, the one, two, three, four, five, six, I wanna say the hexagon, and the square with the rounded corners. And if you look back at my video, um, uh, with the tattoos making the coasters or art tiles. This is the same cutter that I used. But I wanted to show you how I achieved these shapes for these bowls, or not bowls, trinket dishes. And that's how I got them. So like I said, today we are going to make this dish, but rather than a round one, we're gonna go ahead and make the scalloped using the scalloped cutter. So you're going to need your cutters. You are going to need your Primo uh, Sculpey black polymer clay. You're gonna to wanna to have a craft polymer clay knife or blade. You're gonna to want a couple brushes for painting. I always like to have one uh, that's more detailed and one where I can just kind of slap that paint on. Of course, you're going to want a tile to work on and this is a six by six ceramic tile. You can pick these up at the Home Depot, uh, Lowe's, Menards, any of your hardware, major hardware stores will have these. It's in the tile section and it's usually the bath tile, which is usually a wall tile because it's got a very smooth surface. You won't find a floor tile like this or a 12 by 12 tile because the surface is too smooth. People would use it on a floor and then they'd slip if it was wet. And of course, you're gonna wanna have your dragonfly glaze, which is some pretty freaking awesome stuff. So I'm gonna put these to the side. Um, before I do that, I need to roll out um, some clay. You're gonna want a big enough piece of clay to accommodate these cutters. These cutters run, oh, let's see, about three and a half inches, three and a half inches, three and a half inches. So you're gonna wanna roll out some clay and I roll it out to about a three, uh, third thickness, third thickest setting on my pasta machine. So number one being the thickest and then a number three because you want it to have some stability, but you're also going to want to finish up this piece. Now, there were some questions going around in the group and a lot of people are like, well, it's a glaze. You shouldn't have to uh, put anything over it when you put it on polymer clay. You know, it's not a paint, it's a glaze. Well, I'm here to tell you, I've been working with these for a couple months now and this is a glaze, yes. But if you are going to have a trinket dish or beads or you're going to make a pendant or whatever, I still suggest that you put a finish over this. You can put brush on UV resin on it. 
you can use um, Verathane. Verathane would be great. I suggest you protect it. Over time, it is going to chip and wear off. It will after years. So you are going to want to protect it. That being said, I'm gonna go ahead and get my clay ready and I'll be back. Okay, what you want to do, once you have your clay rolled out, you want to smooth it out. And I like to do that with a piece of paper and I just burnish with my finger. Or fingers just to smooth it out. All right, now you're just going to take your cutter and put it on your clay. Now, if you were going to add texture to this, you would do your texture at this point and then cut your piece out. But for this one, we're not doing the texture. We're just going to do it like that original uh, trinket dish, except I'm using the scalloped cutter. So I'm gonna put that on there and I'm going to take my acrylic block and apply pressure. Then just wiggle a little. Making sure that we have a good cut. And then go ahead and release and then pull up your excess clay. <clears throat> And then you put that off to the side, and now we're going to pull our piece up from the tile. So you want to take your blade, get underneath that clay, so you're putting it kind of at an angle. And you're going to very carefully pull this up off the tile. And let me go on this side. And I am certainly making this harder than it should be. And I don't know why it's giving me a hard time. Okay, here we go. Now you pick your piece up and this is where we're going to smooth our edges out. And I have found even with metal cutters, you need to smooth your edges out. And it takes a little extra time, but it's worth it in the end and you don't have to sand anything when you get them nice and smooth. <laughs> and this process doesn't take very long at all, but it is something that you want to make sure that you do. All right, I think we've got them all. I hear someone at my door. I'll Sorry about that, that was my daughter. She, can't, I'm gonna zoom out a little. She came in to give me this. Is that not sweet? It's a nice big coffee mug that says mom with hearts all over it. I just love her so much. She went out for a little while today with her boyfriend. She's starting to feel a little bit better. So she got me this when she was out. All right, I am back again. Um, after my daughter left the studio, she realized she locked herself out of the house. So I had to go let her into the house anyway. Um, 
Now, after you've cleaned the edges on your piece, this is the part where I can't, I'll look for links for these little dishes, but to be honest with you, I found these in a thrift shop. So, I will give you the measurements for them. This square is three and a half inches. <laughs> and this little bowl is three and a half inches. I mean, they were so perfect with these coaster cutters. So, if you can find yourself a little dish like this, and this is made in China, and it is um, glass, ceramic, I'm not sure. And this, of course, was made in China too, and it is just glass or ceramic. So, if you're going to need something like this to bake your pieces in. And for the square cutter, I put my clay, after I cut it out, I put it in this dish and baked it in that, and that's what gave me this absolute perfection. And same for this one that we're gonna do now, went in the round one, and this one went in the round one as well. So, that being said, I will look online and see if I can find some place where you can get these. Um, otherwise, I'm sorry, you'll just kind of have to scour. Maybe Walmart might have them. Um, I don't know, or check the thrift shops, the um, resale shops. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're gonna take our clay and put it in our dish. And you're, you know, you're just gonna line it up the best that you can. It may not be absolutely perfect. Um, you know, and then you just, you move it over a little if you think it needs to go a little more one way or a little more the other. And you just kind of maneuver it until you get it where you like it. And I'll just pull that over a little there. And let's see, this side maybe just a little bit more. All right, that is how I am, well, a uh, perfectionist at times, so I think that's good. So now the next step that I do is just, just kind of pull up the sides as I'm lightly pushing the clay down. And that's just to get out any air from the center to the edges and making sure that it's getting that good curve there for your, for your dish. And then just kind of smooth it out here, making sure that we have all the air out from underneath. All right, that looks good. Now, the next step is to bake this. And you are going to, for Primo Sculpey, you are going to bake this for one hour at 275. 275 for one hour. I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I will be back. Okay, we are back and this is finished baking and cooled down, and you now are just going to take it and just break that seal and pull it off of your dish. And it's nice and smooth. I'm gonna check my edges and get rid of any little pieces that might still be there that we missed when we were smoothing out our edges. And you can always take a nail file to your edges here. 
So we're gonna go ahead and paint. And how I did this bowl, not bowl, trinket dish. <laughs> trinket dish, Allison. <laughs> how I created the design on this trinket dish was I used the violet blue green and that's the two colors in the back of this spiral. The violet blue green and which produces kind of a turquoise teal. And that's, I did kind of did it all over. So, but it's that right there. And this is the red, violet, blue shift. And this is produces more of the blue to the violet. And you do kind of Well, red, violet, blue, it's, you know, you do kind of see the pink, which they call red, but. And then the spiral I created with the red, with the gold, red, violet shift. Okay, so all I did, there's no special trick to this. It was however I wanted to do it. You want to make sure you shake your paints you want to get all those particles dispersed. And I like to work out of the cap. And all I did was brushed it wherever I wanted. And this is kind of a soft brush. So dip it in your paint. And I just kind of put it wherever I wanted it to be honest, and I did it kind of thinly. So you, I really didn't leave any of the white. You know, if you wanna leave the white, that's fine. It'll dry, it will not stay white. It'll dry quicker if you don't leave any white. But that's really all I did was I just put it where I felt like putting it and I did two coats because I wanted some of the black to come through. So I didn't really cake it on there. But yeah, I mean, it's wherever you want to put it. So we'll go ahead and put the other color on and rinse my brush off. Dry it off. And now we're going to use the red, violet, blue. And I'm just gonna put it in the areas that I did not put the other paint. And if a little bit goes over into the other, no big deal. It'll just blend. And you can do your edges, you can do the back, you know, this is, this is your thing. You don't even have to use these colors. I'm just showing you what I used. And there really wasn't any rhyme or reason to it. It's just how I did it. So I'll get it on the rest of that. and then we'll let that dry. Come back to a second coat and then we'll put the spiral on. So I am going to go ahead and let this dry. I'm gonna put the second coat on and I'm going to use the same paint in the same areas that I did before, just another coat and let that dry and then I'll show you how I did the spiral. And I'll be back.
Okay, I am back and the trinket dish is almost dry, but we're gonna go ahead and go on with the next step of making the spiral. And when it comes to drawing and stuff like that, that is really not my forte. <laughs> so my spiral is not perfect, but then again, I don't think that that really matters. So I'm taking a brush that is fairly detailed and getting a bit of paint on there. And again, I am using the red gold violet shift. And I wanna start in the middle and I'm just gonna start by making the little swirl. And I think I'll set this down to make it just a little bit easier. And you're just gonna make a spiral. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It's however you want it to be. I find it easier to do a little bit at a time so that you have plenty of paint going on there. and even kind of dabbing it. And you just keep bringing your spiral out until you hit the edge. And I didn't really put enough paint in this cap. So I'm gonna shake it a little more to get some more on there. I gotta clean my caps out, they're kind of a mess. And it's a lot easier if you have a bit of paint on your brush. So don't be skimpy with this part because like I said, this what is white is going to dry. That glaze will dry and you won't even see the white. Only the particles are left behind. And you can stop your spiral here, or you can take it all the way out, however you want to do it. I think I'm going to go all the way out like I did with the other, or close to it. And maybe, maybe I'll stop at the edge since this is scalloped. And you know what? I think I will, and I think I'll bring it together. <clears throat> so that the spiral becomes connected to itself and then it is never ending and it'll start all over again all right i am going to just leave it at this. I'm not going to let this dry and come back. Um, I will probably have this in an end shot. I may or may not. But when it dries, it will be that goldish, pinkish color like this one is. So this is the end of the videos on the dragonfly glaze 
from all the examples that I showed in the very first video. I'm gonna put a link to the very first video in the description below this tutorial. Go ahead and check it out because tomorrow, that's Friday, April 19th, the winner will be winners, I should say. Originally it was winner and now uh, Plaid has upped the prize to three people, not one person, but three people um, will receive four bottles of the Dragonfly Glaze, as well as some brushes. And that drawing will be tomorrow, probably tomorrow evening, because I want to give people more time after seeing this video to enter. And if you want to know how to enter, check out that very first uh, Dragonfly Glaze video that I have and the link will be in the description. So check that out, go ahead and enter. And I hope you enjoyed all the videos and I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I love bringing you free videos each week and it's really something that I enjoy. I like to, to share, you know, things that I create and then show you how I created them. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. Go ahead and click on that little bell when you subscribe and that will give you notifications every time I post a new video. So until next week, I hope you all have a fantastic weekend and I will see you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.